Hello everyone. Welcome to the WC2 API Manager 420 release webinar. My name is Sisuru Dana. I'm an architect and a director from WC2 engineering team. With me, I got Samita Chaturanga, who is an associate technical lead from the API Manager product team. Here is the agenda for this session. First, we will talk a bit about WC2 API Manager product and then we'll follow up with features and improvements specific to this particular release. I will go through the introductory part of this session and Samita will cover the bulk of the session on what's uh, new in all new uh, 420 release. Let me begin with uh, give a brief introduction to WC2 API Manager. WC2 API Manager is a complete platform for building APIs and integrations. It has been almost a decade since we did our first version of this product. And uh, initially, uh, the product was designed to cater the API management use cases. In the recent past, with the 4.0 release, uh, we expanded the product capability to make it a complete platform for both API management and integration. Today, WC2 API Manager product has been used by thousands of our customers worldwide. And, uh, and this well, well matured product has become the number one open source API management and integration platform. WC2 API Manager let you to easily and securely expose your systems and uh, services as managed APIs to the consumers. These consumers either can be internal consumers or they can be external consumers. The product helps you to implement industry standard authorization flows such as OAuth, JWT, and OpenID Connect with the out-of-the-box support for getting integrated with different identity and access management solutions. You can build APIs from existing services, manage APIs uh, from internally built applications and third-party providers, and monitor their usage for performance. From the inception of an API to the retirement stage, the entire life cycle can be governed in WC2 API Manager. Also, the product provides real-time analytics to API usage and performance statistics, uh, which you can use to make decisions and continuously improve your services and um, expand your business goals. Today, APIs are not just about RESTful APIs. Uh, WC2 API Manager supports all modern protocols and standards. We keep on adding new standards and protocols uh, while keeping the support for existing well-matured protocols robust and stable. In the recent releases, uh, we have introduced support for new features like async APIs, uh, and uh, we have included support for things like GraphQL. So we are catch up with, uh, catching up with all the industry uh, new standards and protocols. One of the key highlights of this product is the flexibility in deployments. You can uh, deploy it in cloud, uh, in your private data centers, or as a hybrid of those two. Addition of integration capability make the API Manager product a complete platform. The integration runtime support creating uh, services, composite microservices, and uh, we can implement uh, different integration scenarios like message routing, message transformation, service orchestration, etc. using this product. The product equipped with uh, powerful gra graphical 
tools to build these integrations. Uh, the integration studio is the main tool which uh, provides this graphical editing experience for building integration. And also the product runtime can be controlled using the using a command line uh, interface tool. Okay, now let me uh, go into in introducing API manager 420 release. Okay, for API manager 420 release, we have focused on five key areas in the product. So all the new features and enhancements that we have done in this particular release uh, can be uh, can be categorized into one of these uh, categories. The first one is a developer experience and then the administration UIs, support for third party analytics platforms, observability and the CI CD process. Under these five categories, we have done major enhancements and also being a matured product, uh, which is developed over a decade, we treat uh, improving the stability and the supportability uh, of existing features is equally important as adding new features and improvements. So together with these uh, features belongs to these categories, we have done number of bug fixes and stability improvements for the product. Okay, now Samita will walk you through about the enhancements and the new features we have done this particular release. Over to you, Samita. Thanks, Isuru. So I am going to go through each of these new features in detail. The first aspect is that we have enhanced the developer experience with API Manager 420, both in developer portal and publisher. One enhancement is that we have provided the support for API specification validation with custom linters. Previously, API definitions were validated against default open API schema when importing or editing them inside the publisher portal. There might be cases where we need to validate fields such as email, name, etc. based on certain conditions. Ability to validate API specifications against the set of custom rules is useful in standardizing and keeping API definitions clean. We can add these custom linters via admin portal. Then we can observe the results of the custom linter rules when importing or creating an API and also when editing the API. Next, we have introduced the feature to automatically generate API documentation from the OAS definition. Actually, this API documentation plays a crucial role in the API management process because the developers rely on it to use APIs. In earlier versions, publishers required to either upload existing documents or create them manually. But by this new feature, API creators don't need to add API documentation explicitly since a default documentation will be created automatically. They can also add their preferred documentation as well along with this default generated document. We have simplified some of the administrative tasks with API Manager 420. First one is regarding the self sign up configurations. In previous versions of API Manager, we stored 10 specific admin level API Manager configurations in the registry. And so, in order to change those configs, users had to log into the management console, then access the registry config and update it. But since editing these registry configs, is not much user friendly. We started to move these configs out from registry to admin portal 
from API Manager 410 onwards. So we had left self sign up configurations and API lifecycle configuration uh, is still in the registry in the management console. So as you can see in this image, users can log into the admin portal and change the configurations for enabling or disabling self sign up configuration uh, without changing them in the registry in management console. Similarly, API lifecycle configuration too can be changed uh, via the admin portal without accessing the management console. Additionally, a simplified JSON structure is also used to represent the configuration instead of the previous complex XML based config. Next, the enhanced certificate management feature. We have uh, enhanced the endpoint management by avoiding accidentally deleting endpoint certificates. When creating APIs that share the same endpoint, backbone certificates are also are shared among all of them. So if we delete the certificate that has already been uploaded to another API endpoint too, it would be unknowingly removed from the uh, other APIs sharing that same endpoint. But by this new feature, the users are warned against such operations while displaying the list of those other APIs. So this feature ensures that certificates being used by other APIs that share the same endpoint are not accidentally deleted. Next, we will discuss about the improvements done to the micro integrator dashboard and the management area. When migrating from EI to MI, there's a feature gap due to the EI management console being discontinued. Users have to go through the file directory to view registry artifacts since the management console is not available. This release provides the ability to search and view registry artifacts via the micro integrator dashboard. And the management API now supports all the CRUD operations such as artifacts listing, modifying, adding and deletion capability as well. Now let's talk on how we have expanded our support for the analytics platforms. First, the ELK support for micro integrator. For AK Manager from 4X series, we had moved away from the on prem APM analytics solution to the cloud based for your analytics. And we also provided the support for ELK stack for API Manager, which is a solution that supports on-prem deployment. But uh, for MI, we hadn't moved to ELK stacks or the cloud-based Cordio Analytics solution. For MI, uh, from uh, 414X onwards, we recommended to use the on-premise WS2 MI Analytics solution for the existing customers who were migrating from older versions. And for the new users, we recommended to use the cloud native or serviti solutions with Prometheus, Stefana, and Jager. So there was a void for a dedicated on-premise analytics solution for micro indicator. So from this release onwards, we brought the ELK support for micro indicator as well. The architecture of uh, ELK stack is similar to how it is for API manager. Micro integrator will publish the analytics data to a log file. Then this log file will be read using file bit and a JSON file will be sent to Elasticsearch through the log stash. Kibana dashboards will be used to display the analytics at the end. You can see some of the dashboards we provide by default for Kibana. Uh, we have provided multiple types of dashboards like uh, for overall uh, stats, API stats, endpoints, 
inbound endpoints, sequences, and proxy services, etc. We have also provided the capability to create custom advanced dashboards as well. Next, uh, the Datadog integration in API Manager. Datadog is a popular SaaS based analytics platform which is widely used in the industry. With uh, API Manager 420 uh, onwards, an existing uh, Datadog environment can be utilized for the analytics requirement. API Manager analytics will be written asynchronously into the API matrix log file. Uh, this log file will be then read uh, by the Datadog agent, which resides on prem and it publishes the data into the Datadog analytics platform. Next, I will discuss about the improvements we have done to the observability aspect. First one is the dynamic correlation log enablement. Correlation logs are important to debug issues in a short period wherever, uh, whenever a critical issue occurs in a production environment. They log vital information of method calls, external calls, or database calls. Currently in the API manager and micro integrator, a server restart is needed to enable or disable these correlation logs. Anyway, we don't recommend to keep these correlation logs enabled in the production environments due to the performance hit caused by them. So when we uh, encounter a production issue and then do a server restart to enable the correlation logs, the issue might not persist afterwards. That is why we introduced this new feature so that uh, correlation logs can be enabled without a server restart. In API Manager, we can do this by calling DevOps REST API or by API CTL. And in Micro Integrator, we can enable by invoking the configs resource of the management API. Next, the open telemetry support for API Manager and Micro Integrator. Tracing is a critical pillar in the observability and it can be used in WCP API Manager to observe API invocation paths and in micro integrator to observe message flows. Previously, we used open tracing for distributed tracing. Now we have adopted the open telemetry standard. The open telemetry incorporates open tracing and open sessions both. So even though uh, now deprecated, open tracing is still available to support previously written custom traces. If we consider about the types of traces supported, uh, for API manager, we previously supported Jaker, Sikkin, and log tracer only. Now we have added support for uh, OTLP, which facilitates sending distributed tra tracing data to various APMs such as New Relic and Elastic. For micro integrator, we previously supported Jager and Zipkin only, but newly added the support for Log Tracer and OTLP also. Considering the CI CD enhancements, we have uh, provided the support for policy migration across environments. With this new feature, we can export and import API policies and trade limiting policies in between environments. This capability is provided through the API CTL. And meanwhile, we have provided the ability to list and delete these policies as well via the API controller. Next, uh, let's uh, discuss about the single usage token feature. Application developers or end users can call an API resource multiple times using the JWT token until it expires. However, uh, if an API developer needs to uh, allow that particular API resource to be accessed only once, no such capability was available earlier. This new feature will provide the 
provide the uh, ability to restrict multiple API invocations and give you only one chance to access that resource. So to enable this feature, we need to attach the policy called uh, revoke one-time token to the resource uh, or the API with the preferred scope as property. And then also we need to generate the WD token with that same scope. Finally, I am discussing about the remote functionalities in this release. First one is the removal of uh, support for jQuery apps from the API manager. This was done in order to get rid of the deprecated jQuery base from the portals. So now we use JSP in place of jQuery for all the server-side communication uh, from our uh, React portals. So because of this change, users will no longer be able to deploy custom jQuery apps in API Manager. Uh, so they will have to write custom React apps instead. Then we have removed the support for JDK 8 from API Manager, Micro Integrator, and SI as well. This is done since we had to bring forward the JDK 17 support. So from now onwards, JDK 11 and 17 only will be supported for the 420 products. Finally, we removed the duplicated publisher and new portal profiles from API Manager. We were already using the control plane uh, European profile instead of publisher or new portal profiles. So the deployments that had publisher and new portal profiles separately will have to use the control plane profile for them. Okay, so that is all on what's new with this latest API Manager 420 release. So we invite you to try out and use this latest 420 release and enjoy these new features and, and enhancements. Yeah, thank you very much.